is watching us online in an area that is of substantial safety. Below ground, storm cellar, basement. Car won't do it. Interior closet or bathroom will not do it. There had been severe weather forecasts for days. We all knew that it was coming. We knew um, that it would be somewhere in the tri-state area, but we didn't, we didn't know it was going to hit more. Nobody knows where it's going to hit. They know where it's going in a general sense, but they can't tell you, this tornado is coming towards your house, directly towards your house. And so I immediately grabbed my son and I, I got into our bathtub and I ran off to his bed. I pulled the mattress in and I thought, okay, if we need this, I guess I'll somehow get this mattress on top of us. And I started, you know, I had the laptop beside us and I'm watching and it just starts becoming worse. It starts getting stronger. I knew that it was coming. It was f five miles away at this point and I, yeah, I was watching it throw debris everywhere and I realized I had to leave right now. Like I was holding Anders and I realized that we were both going to die. just got up and ran. I, 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 I was trying to keep him calm. I was holding him as close as I could and I was just like, we just have to go, it's okay, we're just gonna go. You know, I, panic stricken internally, but I wanted to make sure that he was okay. The moment that I finally got past the hail, I got into my car and I had this moment where I looked at my house and I thought, this might be the last time that I see it. I got out uh, about a, a half a mile from my house thinking, okay, this should be safe enough to put Anders in his car seat. And the winds were just whipping us around. It literally pulled him sideways in my arm. And I thought, nope, this is incorrect. <laughs> I, this is not safe either. Maybe it's gonna hit here. So I get back in the car and and keep driving and I finally got to a point where I could tell the winds weren't as strong and I got out of the car um, and I, I turned around and all I see is a black wall and it was moving across my field of vision. It was so big I couldn't even understand what was happening. <laughs> I was looking at it and I thought, well is it a tornado? <laughs> is it in front of my house? Is it behind my house? Like my mind couldn't even figure out what I was seeing. It was so odd. It didn't look like a tornado. It, it was too big to be a tornado. I have two cats, Piddle and Charlie. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until I had watched the wall hit the house, watched this black thing go by my face that I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, my cats, I left them. I just ran out of the house, and they might be dead. It was about a half a mile from my house whenever I, I about the same place where I tried to get Anders out um, to put him in his car seat, where I realized that we weren't going any further. There were poles, that's why it was moving so slowly. People were just turning around or parking on the street. Um, and so I pulled into, uh, an apartment complex, and that's where the debris field started. Um, and so I didn't have any shoes on. I ran out without shoes. I didn't have time to put on shoes, but I had heels in the back, so I slipped those on and started tiptoeing over the, all this debris and, and light poles with Anders in my arms. I'm holding him, and I still, it hasn't hit me that, that it hit my house. Because the debris is so far away from my house, maybe it went in front. <laughs> my thought, you know, like maybe it didn't hit. And so maybe my cats are okay. And so I, I get to the corner of my neighborhood and I look over and I can see for an entire mile. And it still doesn't hit me. I still think, but where's my street? <laughs> you know, there's no way that you can look at what I was seeing and think that your street is okay. But my brain wasn't willing to accept that. I was just completely floored. And so I just kept walking. and. 
We always knew where our street was because there was a cross street. And I remember thinking, I gotta find the cross street. And I, it took me a moment to realize I was already standing at the cross street. And I looked over and I was like, this is it. This is the cross street. And I kind of slowly, I, I didn't really want to turn around. I didn't, I didn't want to turn around. And so I did it, in, not just in slow motion, but honestly, slowly. And I turned and it, it hit me that it had happened. Like, that it was gone. It was all, everything was gone. As I started walking down my street, I already see people who have been pulled out. You know, they're walking down the road and they're just covered from head to toe in debris and they look awful, you know? I mean, they look devastated. I mean, some of them are injured and they, you know, they have this look in their eyes. Like, they, they can't look around. They're just looking forward, like with their mouths open. They didn't, they didn't know what happened. I saw the bathtub. I saw where we would have been. And, you know, I don't know if, if Vanders and I would have made it. It was full of two by fours and debris and metal, and the cabinets from the kitchen had landed in it. Whenever I saw my husband, people were already helping. I mean, somebody helped him dig a wall off of our bathroom to search for us, you know. I'm just some strange man <laughs> who wasn't even in the disaster area, he just ran towards it. As soon as the debris you know, cloud was gone, he just ran there. And my husband did too. He just ran there and he helped pull a wall <laughs> off. Um, but more and more people just started showing up. They were just, are you okay? Are you okay? Is this your house? Do you need anything? You know, they were just running around. And I, somebody let me borrow their phone and text my mom. And I said, uh, you know, we okay, house gone. <laughs> you know, it's very matter of fact, I'm not a texter. But you know, uh, it's kind of funny. This is somewhat relevant, but right at that moment, my mom, she texted back, praise Jesus. <laughs> and the person who, whose phone it was said, oh, is that your mom? And I was like, yeah, that's mom. You know, and that was the first time it had ever occurred to me. I identify it as an atheist, you know, and maybe have for about eight years, not to anyone who knew me, <laughs> just to other atheists where I felt comfortable and knew that my identity was secure and that it wouldn't, you know, be spread to anybody. You know, the atheist community, we know that people are in the closet and we protect those people. They need to be protected. It was only about an hour after I uploaded the photos that I got an email. And it's just like, hey, we really like your story. It's amazing in this horrible tragedy to have something so good come out of it. You know, mother saved child, you know. We just think that if, if you would, wouldn't mind if we could interview you, we think that it would be really uplifting during this. And I agreed. I thought, yes, you are not wrong. <laughs> this, this is a happy story and, and, and I feel like it needs to be told, you know, because everybody was grieving loss. Everything was horrible. It was just horrible. She asked if I wouldn't mind being on the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, and I thought, wow, Wolf Blitzer, huh? You know, okay. We started the interview, and it, I thought it was going really well. I mean, I wasn't stumbling over my words. Things seemed to be going really well, and, you know, whenever I was done talking, I thought, I'm done talking. It's the end of the interview. Um, but for some reason, he, he just kind of kept going. Uh, and he first started with, you know, you got to thank the Lord. And I was like, eh. <laughs> general you, I guess. And he's like, do you thank the Lord? And I, <laughs> I, I had this moment where I, I just stopped for a second. And I realized, that you, you either lie or tell the truth. And I just, I'm not a liar. <laughs> And you can see my eyes just close and look down because I know that I'm about to do this. I, I realize that 
he, he got, I'm busted. And I mean, my mom didn't know, <laughs> my family didn't know, uh, my in-laws didn't know, no, nobody knew. No, I, I, I've been hiding this for over a decade. I wasn't, I wasn't out. <laughs> but he put me in a position where it was, you, you either need to be honest with yourself right now, or, or you, or you have to lie. And I wasn't about to lie. But I stumbled for a second. I, I just, I, 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 you know, and you hear me try to get it out and then I finally said I'm actually an atheist and then I just I just laughed because <laughs> there's no way he saw that coming like I knew he had no idea I, you know and I felt kind of bad for the guy you know what is he gonna do with that he just asked me to thank the Lord <laughs> it is odd that he would assume that he's, he's a professional journalist I, I went in thinking I was going to tell my story and then it would be over and I'd go home and, you know, eat some ice cream or something. I wasn't going to out myself on a national stage. I didn't go there. I very specifically would never have said that. <laughs> but he put me in a position where there's, I felt like there was absolutely no other option. I don't mind what's happened because people come up to me all the time and they just feel so much stronger. I had a woman come up to me at a baby shower because she, she was like, I, I think I recognize that girl and somebody told her who I was and she's like, oh, I have to speak to her. And she had been in the closet for 30 years and after seeing me, she came out to her closest friends and it was fine <laughs> and, and she's okay. But just the idea that that me showing strength in that moment has given so many others strength is it's worth it. It really is because you know, so many of us hide in the shadows and and we're terrified. And we're such good people, and that's why a lot of us are scared. You know, we think that we'll be judged. We think that somebody's gonna hear that word and feel uh, just describe all of these things to us that don't describe us. That's why we're so afraid, even though that's who we are. People were coming and shoveling out our house, um, but from this perspective, I was able to see uh, a difference in the way the secular community responds to the disaster and the way that the religious do. I mean, the religious are so organized. They're ma wearing matching t-shirts. They show up, they have supplies, they're ready to go. They have teams, you know. They had people who were shoveling my house. They were all wearing Church of Christ shirts, but some, there was somebody from Memphis, there was somebody from Nashville, there were two from Virginia, but they all showed up wearing the exact same shirt because they can just go to their church and say, hey, I'm free, I'm gonna go. And then they put them in touch with the church here who works with the Red Cross here to find out you know, where they're gonna go. And then their volunteers are sent out to a house and they got sent to ours. But I couldn't, I, we don't have anything like that. The secular community, I mean, we, we you know, we have the desire. I mean, the, so many people try to help. They're trying to send money. They're trying to do anything they can. We just don't have the infrastructure in place. Right now I'm talking to the Foundation Beyond Belief because they are working on a project. It's, um, it's called the Humanist Service Corps. It's gonna be coming out in 2014 and where they're gonna be starting to have something like this. They already have forums on their on their site, foundationbeyondbelief.org slash BBN, where you can go and you can sign up and say what you're willing to do. And you don't have to be willing to travel all the way to Oklahoma when there's a tornado, but you can send supplies. You can, you know, uh, send care packages. If you need to send money, they can ensure that the money goes to the right place, you know, these kinds of things. But if you are willing to go, you can say which states you might be willing to travel to. And that's not a commitment. You're not saying, if there's a tornado, I'm going to be there. You're saying, if I'm available, send me an email, and, and maybe I can maybe I can help. 
It's a slow process. Right now we're in a rental house with rental furniture, and but we have recently gotten under contract on a home. So, I mean, that's just, it's so huge. The idea that we're about to be in a home and that we might not leave it and it might we might just get to start building again, like just build our lives back up. It's just, I'm just filled with so much hope, you know. I mean, things have been flatlined for a long time, but they're starting to look much better.